But hey, good evening, my fellow Michiganders, and good evening, my fellow Americans. Holy cow, I can't even believe that we have to talk about some of the things that are going on in this country. If you would have came to me five to ten years ago and say, hey, Garrett, you know what? In five to ten years, they're going to start taking away parental rights. They're going to allow 10 million illegals into our country, in essence, an invasion, as we are all well aware of. Our economy is going to be in the dumpster. Interest rates, going to the grocery store up 40%, our utility bills, it goes on and on and on, right? Because who here is sick and tired of the Democrats and their lies? Say I. I. Who here is sick and tired of the corporate media running with the lies? Say I. I. And that's why we're here today. That's one thing that you have all taught, and Jonathan hit on it, is this grassroots power, this engine, this machine. Because I'll put you in front of the government any day of the week. Just look at what you guys are doing with the fundraising or the, uh, the supplies that you're raising. Where's FEMA, right? We can't rely on the government. Holy cow, what's their job? Their job is to protect us from foreign invasion and protect our rights. And guess what? They're failing miserably at both of them, aren't they? So it's we the people. It's all of you. So don't you ever think that you can't make a difference because if you go back to my journey five years ago, I never would have thought in a million years that I would be on stage in front of Old Glory in politics firing up Michigan and America's greatest asset, we the people. Never thought that was my destiny. I was going to be a chiropractor. I was going to be a motivational speaker, talk to me about success. But God always has a plan, and we know if you want to make God laugh, you tell him your own plan, right? He laughs at me all the time. And so my butt has been on fire over the past five years, ever since April 9th, 2020. And you guys know what happened on that day when Governor Whitmer extended that state of the emergency, right? The order. And hammered our businesses and hammered our kids. And she continued to do that garbage throughout the summer, throughout the year. When all the other states start opening up, she continued to hammer down who? All of us our kids, and we're still experiencing those long-lasting decisions that she did. And I know you guys out here today and tonight, you're frustrated. You're angry. Hey, guess what? So am I. But we have to do something about it. Because we tend, as a society, and we see it all over social media, people throw their little hissy fits. But they're not throwing their hat in the ring like Jonathan, like Steve, like everyone else who's running for politics, right? You got to be activated. You got to stay motivated because we all feel this into our heart, into our very soul that this is it. Jonathan's right. This election is it. We say it all the time, every election, like this is one. No, we know it is because look at what these clowns have done over the past four years. They ruined our country. They're stripping away our rights. They don't even hide it anymore. They come out. John Kerry came out. Hillary Clinton just came out. What did they say about the First Amendment? We better get a hold of that. We can't have people talking on social media and spreading what? Misinformation, right? You guys all watch me get deplatformed. I'm on my 12th time. I've been deplatformed by Facebook several times. Commie TikToks kicked me off three times. YouTube kicked me off. All for talking about everything that's been proven what? To be true. That these lockdowns were going to do more harm than good. That these mandates were garbage. That you shouldn't be taking away parental rights. You know you can't go on commie TikTok and start talking about the LGBTQ plus and whatever other letter they want to part it. They say it's hate now. When I show school board meetings of parents upset, rightfully so, that their daughter has to share a restroom in a locker room with a boy, that's considered hate. What about their rights? That's the problem with America. They make everybody stay silent. We see it time and time again. People are afraid to stand up because they're going to lose their jobs or they're going to get society attacked. We can't do that anymore. We have to stand up for what we believe in. We have to stand up for our creator. They're coming after that too. Discriminating against Christians. Calling us evil. Right? And they just walk around. What do they say? Joy. Everything's joyful. You know what? When I go to the grocery store and I'm paying 40% more for my groceries, I'm not too joyful. And when I'm paying this in my utility bills and my insurance, I'm not too joyful. And I don't know about all you folks in the room, but I didn't get a 40% raise over the past four years. And we're all feeling it. And we're all supposed to take it. No more. No more. 
Because if we don't win this November, we're going to lose this little idea called America. And my strategy and everyone's strategy in this room is probably going to be a little different if we lose, isn't it? It's going to be a little different because they're going to start stripping away our rights and they're going to start hammering us down. And we're going to have to figure some things out. But it's a whole hell of a lot easier if we win and we put our heels in the sand up and down the ticket. We got to win back to house. We got to win back the house in the state of Michigan. Because if we do that, they can put their heels in the sand and stop Governor Whitmer and start doing some common sense and they can say no. And then you're going to see my butt really on fire over the next two years as we get the right candidate to run for governor and get the attorney general and get the secretary of state. That's what needs to happen next. I'm going to give you two months off during the holidays. You're welcome. <laughs> right? I'm going to give you two months off. In January in 2025, I'm going to activate you again. And you're going to be with me as we get behind the right candidate that can win not only in the primary, but also the general. And that's why I'm not running. Everybody says, Gary, you need to run again. I am not running. I'm not going to split up the ticket again. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get behind the right candidates from here on out. If I need to run in the future, maybe for some type of office, sure. God will open the door, hopefully a big one for me to see it, right? I'll consider it that time. But my role right now is to continue to motivate, continue to inspire Michigan and America's greatest assets, we the people, to hammer down and get behind the right candidates. And I'm going to call out both sides. If I see a candidate that should not be running because they don't have the right skill set, I'm going to call them out because we don't need that garbage this time. And I want to hammer down with this one more thing. Jonathan hit on election integrity. The only way we can change that is to win. That's the only way. Because we know it's screwed up. Really bad. We see it in 2020, right? We all witnessed it. Went to bed that night, went and woke up, and we lost. Weird. But we're conspiracy theorists, right? Can't talk about that on YouTube. You get deplatformed, because I was. But we have to win. And we have to show up and vote. And I don't care if you got to make these people do it early voting. We have to overwhelm. We have to make it too big to rig. Because last election cycle, 200,000 Republicans in the state of Michigan did not vote. They stayed home. These aren't independents. These aren't Democrats. These are Republicans. For some reason, job, kids, they forgot. Maybe they thought their vote was going to count. 200,000. Do you understand what could have happened if we had those 200,000 people show up, up and down the ticket? That's amazing that we have that. And people say, this is a purple state. Bullshit. It is a red state if we just get those folks to show up. And it's not hard. We have to reach out to the middle, right? And all you have to do is ask the middle, say, hey, is your, is your life a little better now than it was five years ago? They'll say no. Hey, do you agree with boys losing girls' locker rooms and restrooms? They'll say no. And they'll try to bring up abortion. You know what you say? Hey, that's so last election cycle. It's up to the states now. That's what President Trump did. Next. That's why they continue to kick and scream about that topic, because that's all they have. That's all they have. Because the rest of the country is a dumpster fire, and they know it. So they take the corporate media, and they take their social media minions, and they just push it, push it, push it. And it's classical conditioning. Classical conditioning, excuse me, a.k.a. brainwashing. That's what they do. So you get through brainwashing how? By asking questions. Not telling them who to vote for, just ask questions. That will bring their mind to neutral so they hopefully can make a logical educational decision because what do we hear all the time? Well, I just don't like President Trump's attitude. Don't invite him to Christmas dinner then, right? <laughs> Who cares? And Jonathan's met President Trump. I met President Trump. He's a really good guy. He's not what the media portrays him, but I do know this. For most of us in this room who are my age and a little older, what is our stereotype of New Yorkers? In your face. Ego, right? They'll call you out. That's just a stereotype of New Yorkers. That's what they are. We've always known it. Nothing's changed. So don't allow people to vote because of someone where somebody's from. How about we vote on some what's called logic and common sense? How about policies? How about putting America first and Americans first instead of the illegal immigrants and Ukraine and everything else and Lebanon, sending all of our hard-earned tax dollars all over there when we have a dumpster fire that we need to fix here? Common sense and logic is what is needed. And you guys all taught me over the past five years how powerful we the people can be who here circulated and signed the Unlocked Michigan petition. 
Holy cow, how great did that feel? For those of you who don't know who that is, we will boo you on the way out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Unlocked Michigan petition took away the 1945 law that Governor Whitmer was using to lock us down and unilaterally control us and, not, and bypass the legislature. We the people got together, got a vision, got a goal, 539,000 signatures in 80 days. One of the fastest citizens' petitions to ever be done. And after you guys showed me what we the people could do when you have a vision, when you have a goal, you gave me hope. That's why I'm up here today. Because President Trump lost or won this state back in 2016 by 10,704 votes. That's it. That's it. It was that close. And if it's that close again, that means 20 people out of each of our 83 counties, 20 people, just goes and talks and has conversation with seven other people and sways in the vote for President Trump and the rest of up and down the ticket, we win. So when people say, I, 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 my vote doesn't matter, yes, it does. Or when I have a conversation, yes, it does, it does matter. Because you never know what small acts of conversation, a phone call, a door knock that you may say or do, they may literally change lives of billions tomorrow because this is worldwide and that's how powerful you are. So God bless you. God bless the state of Michigan. Of course, and always, God bless these United States.